Praise God. Praise God. Well, before you take your seat, um, because we're going to do something. The Lord, I, I was interceding for you this morning. Because you see, there is a scripture in the book of Romans, and it says this, and I just want to get the reference. It says that the call and gifts of God are irrevocable. Romans eleven twenty nine, the gifts and call of God are irrevocable. God will not change his mind, but this is what the Lord said to me. He said, Joe, my gifts are trapped in the hearts of my people. The Lord showed me destinies that are literally held captive. And I declare in this place that gifts are about to be liberated. I declare destinies are about to be released in this place. But this is what I want you to do very quickly. Grab hands with the person to your right and to your left. And I want you to pray in the Spirit for two minutes. Lift up your voice in, in tongues. Pray. I want you to pray for every gift in this place that is trapped to be released. Every destiny that's been held captive to be released. In Jesus' mighty name, the devil has been trying to hold you captive. The enemy has been trying to hold gifts, gifts captive. Oh, restia la mahanya corio, restia la mahasta, chokokwanya. I declare that the Spirit of the Lord God is the on me and he has sent me to heal the broken hearted I declare that he has sent me to bring liberation to open the prison doors in Jesus mighty name now give the Lord a big shout of praise Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Now shut your eyes in the presence of the Lord and lift up your hands. With your eyes closed and your hands raised. Heavenly Father, would you take my lips of clay and would you speak? And with your eyes still shut and your hands raised, just say out loud, Heavenly Father, my heart is open to you. Speak to me today. Holy Spirit, I give you access to every hidden cavern of my heart. Do everything that you need to do so that I can fulfill every ounce of my potential so that I can fulfill my destiny. Have your way. And it's in Jesus' mighty name that we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Please take your seat. Praise God. So wonderful, my dear friends. Apostle Tommy and Pastor Tommy. Family, I love you guys. Praise God. 3 John and verse 2 is a prayer from the Holy Spirit for you. And if the keyboardist stays with me the whole time, it would be wonderful. 3 John and verse 2 says, Beloved, I pray. Can you hear that's the heart of God praying for you? Say out loud. The Lord is praying for me. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health even as your soul prospers. 
My friend, there is a direct correlation between your inner well-being and the well-being of every single area of your life. There is a direct relationship because God says, I love you so much that I can't, I won't promote you to a level that will make you believe that somehow, listen to me, if promotion makes you believe you're of more value than you were before you were promoted, God's saying, I've got to wait. Because I need to get you to a place where your heart says, I know my value. I know I'm your beloved. Imagine that when the Lord prays for you, he doesn't say, oi, you. He says, beloved, beloved. You know, that word means worthy of love. And he says, beloved, I pray for you that you'll prosper in all things and that your body will be healthy to the extent that your heart prospers. Do you know what true prosperity is? It's you fulfilling the fullness of your destiny. You know, you're never going to know happiness outside of your purpose. It's inside your purpose that you know true happiness. And God is speaking and he's saying, my child, my heart's desire for you is that you would be raised up into the fullness of your purpose. But your heart, Proverbs 4 verse 23, determines the course of your life. It's nothing else, it's no one else, it's your heart, my friend. And God is saying, I want to deal with something so deep today. This is a deep, deep, deep heart issue that God placed on my heart to talk to you about today. He's going to do something so profound in the next few moments. We're going to look at the pain of injustice the agony of injustice and the journey of restoration that God wants to bring you on. Because you see, let me make a statement and my prayer is you'll never forget this. The enemy has a purpose for your pain. And he wants to use your pain to keep part of your purpose trapped. I am going to be ministering today on a destiny blocker that has been trying to block destinies. A destiny blocker that the enemy manages to cause deep down on the inside and we don't even know it's there. We give it all sorts of other words and terms. But God is saying, I am bringing freedom. There's been too much injustice, too much injustice, too much injustice. But the Lord says the things that kept you stuck, where you were saying, why can't I get past this? The Lord is saying, I'm here to do something new, something new in you. We're dealing with a destiny blocker. And let me tell you, This is something the Lord spoke to me a week ago. He said, if you don't deal with destiny blockers, destiny blockers will deal with you. We can't ignore the issues of our hearts. We're going to go into two stories in Scripture. And I want you to stay with me. For some of you, every word I say is for you. Every word for others. You need to hang on every word until the word that comes that is for you. But we're going to look at two stories in Scripture. Because I want you to know, my friend, that the devil targets you in the area of your destiny. He's always looking to injure you in the area of your destiny. He wants to hurt you in the place where God wants to raise you up. 
We're going to look at two people. The first one is Joseph. And we're going to look at it from one particular perspective. And I want you to stay with me. And I'm reading from Genesis 37. And I'm going to start at verse 23. Here we have a young man with a dream that was given by God. Here we have a young man with a destiny and a purpose. Let me tell you, your suffering does not suggest that somehow God is not with you. Did you hear that? God was with Joseph, but he was with him in the middle of the valley. He was with him in dark places. He was with him in pain and pressure. He was with him in prison. Here we see this man and he had his whole life ahead of him, just 17 years of age. And then he had a terrible suddenly. Genesis 37, starting at verse 23. It says, when Joseph had come to his brothers, his father sent him and said, go check on your brothers, see how they're doing and bring them some food. Let me tell you, just because you're doing the will of the father does not somehow take you out of the way of pain. The devil tells us lies that somehow suggest that if we're doing the will of God, we should be exempt from suffering. It's not Bible, my dear friend. The place we have no suffering is in glory. And until then, you and I will suffer. You and I will face pain. We will be wounded. We will be hurt. And your job and my job is to deal with the pain it causes. It says here, He'd gone doing exactly what his dad told him to do. Verse 23, when Joseph had come to his brothers, they stripped Joseph. Imagine the indignity. Stripped. They stripped Joseph of his tunic, the tunic of many colors that was on him. Then they took him and cast him. They threw him into a pit. And the pit was empty. There was no water in it. And then they sat down. Imagine, this is Joseph's brothers. They kick him. They beat him. They strip him. He's lying in the bottom of a pit. We know from later on in the book of Genesis in chapter 50 that he's crying out. He's probably saying, come on, guys, it's me. It's your brother. Help me. Please don't leave me here. And what do they do? They sit on the edge of the pit and have a picnic. Such callousness, such cruelty, but it didn't stop there. It says, then they lifted their eyes and there was a company of Ishmaelites. So they thought, let's make some money out of our brother. Quick buck to get rid of this man. Let's destroy the dreamer. And there are people who've tried to destroy you. The people who have done things and said things and treated you in ways. And even the fact that you're sitting here for some of you is a miracle. Joseph's brothers wanted to destroy the dreams because they couldn't handle how the dreams made them feel. They were jealous of the dreamer and they just couldn't deal with all their issues on the inside. So they wanted to destroy the dreamer and his dreams. Let's get him out of the way. We call it today human trafficking. They sold their brother as a slave. Say Ishmaelites. So these Ishmaelites carried this man away. And then Joseph was sold like a piece of meat to a man called Potiphar. 
sold like a piece of meat, bought and sold. You're not a human being, you're an animal. And he worked for Potiphar, did his best, tried his hardest. And then, of course, you know the story, Potiphar's wife tried everything to get her way with him and he wouldn't let it happen. And so because she couldn't have him, she wanted to destroy him. You know, when the devil can't have you, he will try and destroy you. But that is why we fight the good fight of faith and we don't give up. She lied about him. He ended up as a result being thrown into prison like a common prisoner. We're told in Psalm 105 that his ankles were bound in iron, that there was an iron collar around his neck. This wasn't a pleasant place to be. It says that they bruised his ankles. And I don't think we're talking a little bit of blue bruising. I think we're talking his legs were black, swollen, bleeding. Now I want you to say, Joseph's brothers. Now say Egyptians. There's a reason we're going to come back to this. So here we have a man betrayed by the guys he grew up with, betrayed, let down, cast away, hated, kicked by the very men that he grew up with. And you can't even say, well, they didn't mean to hurt him. Oh, yes, they did. And he goes from there. And then he's a slave. And here he is trying his best, even as a slave, right? But while he's a slave, I mean, suddenly he's being pursued. And then he's falsely accused. Oh my goodness, accusation hurts. Accusation is like someone stabbing you through the heart. There is one who speaks like the piercings of a sword, it says in Proverbs 12, verse 18. Some of you, you have had things said about you. You have been judged. You have been hated. You have been marked by the words of other people. They've said things that weren't true. They've tried to muddy your character. They've tried to muddy your reputation. And they've done all that because they couldn't bear the dreams on the inside of you. They couldn't handle it. And the Lord says, son, I'm about to do something new for you. I'm about to open new doors. I've seen the pain you've suffered. I've seen the burden you've carried. I've seen the times when you said, God, I don't know that I can take this much longer. And the Lord says, son, I heard the cry in the night and I am here for you. And the Lord says, son, there was morning through the night, but joy is coming to your house. Joy is coming to your house. But the Lord says, son, the words hurt you. They hurt you. They hurt you. And the Lord says, I'm here. Because the words pierced your soul and got stuck in there like poisoned arrows. And the Lord says, I'm lifting them out today. I'm about to take those words away. Joseph was falsely accused by Potiphar's wife, charged with rape, thrown into prison. 
Now, this is what I want to say before we move on to the second story. Do you remember I said the enemy targets you in the area of your destiny? And I want you to see it from Scripture. Joseph was betrayed by his brothers, torn apart, stripped of his dignity by his brothers. He was sold into slavery and bought by Egyptians. Egyptian ruling class were the very ones who falsely accused him. The Egyptian ruling class, I'm sure Potiphar knew this isn't true. Potiphar knew who Joseph was. There is someone here and people turned a blind eye and they chose not to speak up for you when you needed someone to speak up. They chose to stand back and ignore the injustice. And the Lord is saying the enemy has tried to use that to make you eat, to eat you up on the inside. He stood back. Well, it's my wife. It would look bad on me if I confronted this. You see, this is the thing, my friend. The Lord is saying, I want to heal you of every hurt. I want to reach into the depths of your heart where you have been treated in ways no one should ever be treated, where you've been let down, forsaken, given up on. And the Lord says, I want to heal. I want to do a work deep down. And God is going to do such a healing work in this house today. But this is the thing. This is the thing. There is a journey that is a requirement for you to fulfill your destiny. We'll come back to it. But the very people who destroyed Joseph's life were the very people he was called to save. God sent Joseph to Egypt to bring salvation to the very brothers who tried to destroy him. God sent Joseph to Egypt to also bring salvation to an entire nation in Egypt that had imprisoned him, bought him like meat. The devil has a plan for your purpose, my friend. But there's a way out. We're going to look at a second story. I'm going to the book of Ruth, starting the halfway through the, the first verse, and I'm reading in the New Living Translation. A man from Bethlehem left his home and went to live in the country of Moab, taking his wife and two sons with him. The man was Elimelech, and his wife was Naomi. Verse 3, Elimelech died and Naomi was left alone with her two sons. The two sons married, and I'll jump forward, but about 10 years later, both Marlon and Killian, that's her sons, died. This left Naomi alone without her two sons or her husband. We're speaking about the pain of injustice. Here's a woman called Ruth who was an obedient wife. She followed her husband to a foreign land called Moab. She went there with her husband and children. First, her husband died. I have seen people suffer loss and that loss has crushed them. First her husband died, but then both her sons died. You know, here we have a woman, she loved God. She served God. 
She was obedient. She was willing. She was doing the right thing. And and she lost everything. She lost everything that mattered to her. But I want you to hear what she said when she returned. Because she decided, well, there's no point me staying here. I've got nothing in Moab. I'm going to go back home to Bethlehem. I'm just going to go and reconnect with my family. Listen, even after tragedy, God still has a plan. Even after devastation, God still has a plan. She went back to Bethlehem. And everyone was excited. Ruth chapter 1, starting at verse, halfway through verse 19, still in the New Living. When they came to Bethlehem, the town was excited, saying, Is it really Naomi? The women asked. But she answered, Don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara. For the Almighty has made life very bitter for me. Naomi means pleasant. It means our delight. That was the name of our two-year-old daughter. It's a beautiful name, but Naomi goes back to Bethlehem. And she says, don't call me Naomi anymore. Call me Mara. Mara means bitter. She's saying, I went out full and I've come back with nothing. But this is what I want you to hear. Ruth believed that her problem was God. Ruth believed that the God of heaven and earth, our good, good father was against her. And there are some of you here and you have believed that God is the perpetrator of your suffering. And you may have said... Oh no, God's good. But deep down you feel, why didn't he save? Why did he allow this to happen? Why? You see, the devil has specific purposes for all types of pain. He has a purpose for rejection. He has a purpose for grief. He has a purpose for shame. Every kind of pain you could face, he has a purpose for it. You better know that. But he has a very specific purpose for the pain of injustice. Some of you here, you have suffered terribly. You've gone through injustice. You feel deep down on the inside, why did God even allow this? Why did I have to go through this? You know, after our beautiful two-year-old daughter, she was our only child at the time. Blonde, curly hair, bright blue eyes. Our joy. We were serving God with all of our hearts, doing everything we knew to be good parents. And then one day, I mean, as, as suddenly as that, One day, she contracted just what was like a normal flu and then suddenly went downhill. And when Tuesday morning, I wake up with her in the bed with me because she'd been unwell. I'd said to my husband, look, you sleep somewhere else. We got her to the hospital. But by Wednesday morning, at quarter to eight, 15 minutes before eight o'clock, my little girl was dead. And I remember in those weeks and months after she died, I remember saying, if I can just know why, why did my little girl have to die? What did I do wrong? What did we do wrong? If I can just know why, why us, why her? two-year-old, if I can just know why, then I can start to heal. For me, I didn't blame God, 
But I felt that God had somehow not come through for me. I knew the enemy was the author of sickness and death. But deep down, I was like, God, I've seen you heal others. I remember the day, dear friends, our associate pastors had a baby. The baby was born very sick. She was born HIV positive, very, very sick. Doctors didn't think she would make it. God gave me the exact day that little girl would get out of hospital. God gave me the timing when she'd smile for the first time. We went to the hospital. My husband slept in the hospital with this little baby to give her, the little girl's parents, time off. We did everything and that little girl lived. And ours died. Why? I want to read a verse to you. Hebrews 12 verse 15. And I've said all this in some ways to get to this verse. Hebrews 12. And I'm in the New King James again. Look carefully. Lest anyone fall short of the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble. And by this, many become defiled. Do you know you can fall short of the grace of God? The word grace, I mean, when you look at it in the Greek, it means favor. There is a heart issue so serious to the heart of God that he says, my child, I love you. I want to prosper you. I want to raise you up. But this heart issue can keep you out of my favor. That's why this verse is very clear, looking carefully, lest anyone fall short. And this is the thing, it's a root. Say it's a root. It's a root of bitterness. And let me tell you what a root of bitterness does. There's a number of things I'm just going to quickly touch on. You get stuck. Because have you ever noticed roots go deep down? So you get stuck in that place, stuck in those memories, stuck in that injustice, stuck. And you try and you pray and you fast and you serve and you try to do everything that you know, but you're stuck. Ruth, rather Naomi, in the book of Ruth was stuck. God had the most amazing plan for this woman. She was going to become a facilitator. Oh my goodness. In the story of Jesus Christ. But she had to get unstuck. I was stuck, my friend, after Naomi died. I was stuck in that sense of injustice. God, why? What did I do? Why me? Why us? Why her? And what I didn't mention is if she'd been given a shot of antibiotics, $10 shot of antibiotics on arrival, she'd be here today. But the doctors just didn't give her antibiotics. My, my beautiful daughter, Abby, who's 20, is in medical school. I do not, I'm so grateful for doctors. But she didn't get that one $10 shot that would have saved her life. And her whole blood system got infected. She died of sepsis. She had an invisible form of meningitis, no, ra no rash. But I was stuck with why, God? Why? And the 
there are some of you and you're stuck. And you've kept rehearsing over and over again. For some of you, it's, it's a rehearsal of if I'd done this, maybe it could have been different. If I'd tried that, maybe we would have a different result. And there's others of you that the rehearsing has been taking you round and round what they did that they shouldn't have done because it was so wrong, like Joseph. The very people who should have been standing with Joseph, protecting him, helping him, were the very people who trashed him, who destroyed him. And God is saying, I want to do something new in you. And, and it keeps coming to my remembrance. You know, one of the signs of bitterness... I want you to know my, my new book, Destiny Blockers. I cover bitterness in this. And, and this book, I remember when our media team said, now I want you to do a promo as though you're speaking to Benj and Abby. That's my two wonderful children that are with us today. And I remember looking at that camera and I went, Oh my goodness, I love you so much that I don't want you to get trapped in these horrible heart issues. I said, please get this book and read this book. After they stopped rolling, I, I was shocked about the depth in me. Because you see, there are these heart issues that the devil is trying to use to keep you captive to keep you bound. But this is what kept coming to my remembrance was one of the signs that you're stuck in bitterness because it's a root. And so it keeps you stuck in the past, keeps you wanting to look back, is you spy. What do I mean? Well, we're in a social media age. How many of you are on social media? You constantly look at their profiles. What are they saying now? What are they doing now? Where are they at now? And God is saying, I want to set you free, my child. I want to heal your heart and bring you out of that place. God is saying, I want to do something new. Listen, bitterness isn't just a heart issue. Listen to this. Lamentations 1 and verse 4, it says, she is in bitterness. Bitterness isn't just a feeling, it's a place. And God is saying, I want to take you out of that place today. I want to ask you right now to stand in the presence of God. Thank you, Jesus. And as you stand, I want to ask you to have your heart so open before the Lord. Because the enemy has been trying to hold destinies. The enemy, if, if, if I can have help to have the pulpit back up here, that would be amazing. The enemy has been trying to use the injustices that you have suffered to keep you bound. But this is what I want you to hear, my friend. Listen, God took Joseph through all of this. But you know something about Joseph? In just seven chapters in the book of Genesis, he cried so loudly that his neighbors heard. By this point, he's already a prime minister. He cried so loudly that his neighbors heard. Why did I mention he's a prime minister? He didn't care what people would think. He just wanted to be free. He cried so loudly his neighbors heard. He cried so long his cheeks were stained red. He cried in the arms of his daddy. He cried in the arms of his brothers. But this is the thing. I believe that what God was doing in those years, in Potiphar's house in the years of slavery, in prison, in those more years of injustice, when he got forgotten 
by a butler who promised to remember him. God was working in his heart because God was saying, my son, I want to heal you in the depths of your innermost being. I want to take your pain away. But not only that, you know, you can't serve someone you don't love. Joseph was called to serve the very man who tried to destroy him. And the only way that you can love and hug and kiss the cheeks, remember he hugged his brothers when they were reunited. He held them in his arms, in his embrace. And the only way you can do that, my friend, is if you've been healed in the depths of your innermost being and if you've released the injustice. You see, I, I just need to borrow someone. Could, do, do you mind? Can I just borrow you? Thank you so much. Let me show you what happens when we're bound to the injustice of what someone has done. We are umbilically attached to them. If I'm angry with my sister, if I'm hurt and I've tried daily to forgive, but still I rehearse what happened, still when I look at their face in the depths of my heart and I picture them, I can't smile. I, I call that the smile test. You know if you've truly forgiven because you can picture their face and smile. But while I'm still holding something, I bring that person everywhere I go. I try and walk into my new season, but I'm bringing the very person who nearly destroyed me with me everywhere I go until I say, Lord, heal my heart. And until I release the injustice, I bring them. And God says, I can't take all of you. I have a promotion for you. But I can't take all of you to that new place. Thank you so much. I want to ask you just to shut your eyes. We are going to go into a very deep moment in the next 15 minutes. But I want you to remember that the gifts of God on the inside of you and your destiny is depending upon you responding correctly. Let me make another statement. Look at me for a moment. I have been badly betrayed and I'm not going to go into it right now. Badly. But the Bible says in Proverbs 4.23, God, your heart. God does not hold those who hurt me responsible for my heart. He holds me responsible. Right now, shut your eyes in the presence of the Lord. There's so, been so many demonic plots against so many of your lives. And with your eyes shut, I hear the heart of God first. He says, I love you, my child. I love you, my child. I've got a plan that's so great. I've got a plan for you, my child. I want to take you. I want to promote you. I want to raise you up in my sight. I have a plan for you, my child. Your dreams did not die on that day. Your dreams are my dreams, and I'm about to make a way. I love you. I love you. I love you. But I want to release my gifts. I want to release my gifts. I want to release my gifts. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Right now, with your eyes shut and your hands raised, if you have suffered the pain of injustice, 
If you have been treated in ways that you shouldn't, maybe you lost someone and it was so wrong. Maybe you've gone through tragedy that makes no sense. I wanna ask you to come and kneel at the altar. Come and kneel at the altar. Don't miss this moment. Don't miss this moment. There is an encounter waiting for you at the altar. There is a moment if you have endured false accusation, if you've been betrayed, if you've been hurt, if you've gone through things that just tore you apart right now, just kneel at the altar. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Father. And as you kneel, Lamentations 2.19 says, pour out your heart like water before the face of the Lord. Father, reach into the depths of every place of pain. Pour out your pain in the presence of the Lord. Pour out your pain before me. Pour out your pain before me. Talk to me. Talk to me about what you've been through. Talk to me, my child. Talk to me, my child. Talk to me. Talk to me, my precious, precious child. And the Lord says, talk to me about what happened. Tell me about the pain that you've been through. Pour out your heart like water in the presence of the Lord. He says, I saw what you've been through. I saw what you've been through. I know what they did to you. I know how wrong it was. But I am here for you. I'm here to do something new. I'm here for you. I'm here for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, break up where pain has been buried deep on the inside, Lord God. Break up the fallow ground. There is a purpose and a time for every season. There is a time for every purpose. And the Lord says there is a time to break down. And you've tried to be strong. You've tried to be strong for the sake of others. But the Lord says, my child, my child, you are my child. Pour out your pain before me. Pour out your pain before me. I am here for you. I am here for you. I'm here to do something new. I'm here for you. to the deep places where injustice has been bound, has been bound. Lord God, reach deep down, deep down. Oh, and it was too much for you, too much for you, too much for you. Oh, it was too much. It was so wrong. It was so wrong. Jesus, 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 thank you, Lord. There is something that we need to do with injustice. Every person in this place who suffered injustice, just all of you with your eyes shut. I remember when I asked the Lord, what do we do with it? Yes, we pour out the pain, but there's still the injustice. And this is what the Lord said. He said, give it to me as an offering. Give me the injustice as an offering. King David said, I will not bring to you something that cost me nothing. 
When you bring this injustice as an offering, it's going to cost you everything. Everything. And the Lord says, lay down the injustice as an offering. I remember the day that I got into God's presence and said, Lord, I don't know why my little girl had to die. It was so wrong. But I remember the day God said to me, Joe, as long as you are bound with why, as long as the torment of your questions hold you captive, you will be held in chaos and torment. Because the injustice was binding me to the pain of her death. And the Lord says, lay down. For some of you, it's lay down why. For others, it's lay down the injustice. Right now across this room, just say out loud, Heavenly Father, it was so wrong. What they did was wrong. They hurt me, Lord. What happened to me was wrong. I don't understand, Lord. But I make a decision today. I give up every question. The same way I would give up cigarettes. I give up my right to an answer. I let go of the torment. I surrender every sense of injustice and I lay it down before you. As an offering, Lord, receive this offering. I lay it down, Lord. Just spend a moment. I want you to see yourself letting go. And some of you who believed God was against you, Right now, if that's you, you believe somehow God was against you like Naomi believed. Right now, just with your eyes shut, lift up your hands. If you have believed that God was against you, that he didn't do what was needed, with your eyes shut and your hands raised, just say out loud, we'll all pray together. Just say, Heavenly Father, I am so sorry that I thought you were my problem. I am so sorry that I held you responsible. Forgive me, Lord, because only good things come from you. Thank you, Lord, that you are good. You are a good, good Father. You are so good to me. I no longer blame you, Lord. I will not blame you, Lord. Instead, I ask you to heal my heart. Reach into the depths of my heart and take my pain away. The day that I laid down every injustice. Thank you, Lord. And you know, it was that day when I did what you're doing right now, that I stepped into an extraordinary healing journey. God healed every single hurt in my heart related to the death of my daughter. I have no sadness, I don't miss her nothing, just joy. And right now, still with your eyes shut across this place, we're going to release the people. You remember that picture I showed you of when we couple 
with the people who have wronged us and say out loud, Heavenly Father, I let go of everything they did that hurt me. I forgive you. I forgive you for hurting me. I forgive you for wounding people I love. I forgive you. I release your debt. You don't owe me anything. I write off that debt. You don't owe me a thing anymore. And if they're still alive, then just say these words, Heavenly Father, would you bless them? Will you heal their hearts? Will you help them? In Jesus' mighty name. Jesus' mighty name. Father, I speak your blessing over every single person in this room. Just spend a moment making a commitment to continue on your healing journey. Healing is not a one-time encounter. The healing of your heart is a process. Father, I speak your blessing. I speak your peace into every heart. Seal where you have healed. And thank you that you who have begun the most beautiful work, the most glorious work, you will be faithful to complete it. Thank you so much for watching today's message. If you are watching today, and you have not made the decision to accept Jesus into your heart, I want you to repeat this prayer with me out loud and say with me after me, Father God, I recognize that I am a sinner. I repent of all my sins. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, come into my heart right now. Amen and amen. If you did this prayer, thank you so much. If this video has been a blessing to your life, please share it with your friend and subscribe to our channel so don't miss out any other video or live broadcast. Thank you so much. We love you. Bless you. See you next time.